Good morning, good morning. How are you? Just trying to work out whether or not we're in the right place. It looks like it. Happy Thursday. How are you all doing? I've got some droopy flowers in the uh, in the bars there. I've got my Christmas candles lit today. It's officially Christmas candle season. So I think today is frankincense and myrrh. I got a new one, but I don't, I'm not that keen on it. I smell, it's a bit too flowery. So tell me, what is your tradition for Christmas that you can't wait to get into? So for lots, it's the advent calendars now. And um, thankfully my children don't want to open the advent calendars before school and eat chocolate for breakfast, which is good. Uh, we've got one of these sort of material ones so we can choose what sweets go in it. But what's your tradition? Tell me. So for me, it's, um, and you know, I know it wasn't quite, um, Kat, hi, lovely to have you here, lovely to see you. Um, Bailey's coffee, I absolutely love a Bailey's coffee and we made one at the weekend and my oldest, who's nine, said, oh, is that it now? It's officially Christmas. Mum's had her first Bailey's coffee. So yeah, that's mine, plus my Christmas candles to just make the house smell amazing. So that's me, that's my candle lit. So it's starting to feel a little, little bit Christmassy. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's all good. So welcome, welcome. If this is your first time with me on a Thursday morning, this is a regular thing that I do every single week. I go live and share whatever is our theme of the week. So this week we've been talking about balance and we've been talking about getting things into your life that um, sort, of, sort of allow you that freedom and allow you that balance to possibly, and, and, and balance means something different for everyone, which we'll, we'll dive into in a second. So sometimes it's around having the ability to spend time with loved ones. Sometimes it's around actually being able to just have time for yourself, but getting that combination of working, having time for yourself, having time for loved ones, whatever that balance is to you. That's That's been our theme for the week. Emma, good morning. Have you got rain and drizzle and coldness with you as well? And Kat, how, what about the snow? You had snow last time we spoke. Um, yeah, so how much snow did you have? I hope it didn't didn't mean that anything was affected. Oh, you love a Bailey's too. Nice music and yoga, yes. Oh yeah, that's nice. Is there like a particular Christmas yoga? I'm wondering, I bet, I bet I can find one. Um, I've also found that I have lots of headbands with various little Christmassy things on. So I might start adding those into a Thursday morning as well, just to get us all ridiculously into the mood of things. Um, so let's dive in to, to our, our discussion today about balance. So for me, the big piece around why we need to have that balance in our lives is to avoid overwhelm because if we don't have balance eventually and it might not be straight away but eventually we're going to start feeling that there's just too much going on I haven't got time for everything and this time of the year as we've said in some of the posts in the group this week it's really easy to slip into that because there's heaps to do and we set these expectations for ourselves and you know I've got two boys who have both got birthdays in December as well and and actually this year feels a little bit different because we're not obviously doing parties and we're not having a whole stream of people visiting us um, because of, of the various restrictions so it's not as bad as it, it, it can be but I used to be very much that um, like we would start the build up to Christmas from bonfire night it was like an immediate as soon as the last fireworks gone I'd be like right we've got to get this organized this organized this organized because I was being pulled by my employer to work still and show up and do my thing. If you're joining, by the way, please say hello. Um, give me a good morning. Tell me where you are. Uh, Emma, you've got rain. Rubbish. North Devon. Oh, you're going to try the vegan veggie. Let's let us know how that is. Yeah. Oh, nice. Good. I'm glad the Baileys is part of I'm not. I'm not, by the way, advocating that we have a Baileys at half past ten on the morning on a Thursday. But you never know. There needs to be a Christmas one a little bit closer. Morning, Zosha. Um, so yeah, for, so for me, December used to just be so hectic and actually there was very little balance in my life. Um, but now I'm, I'm in control a lot more. I'm able to prioritize for myself. I don't have that pull. I don't have that requirement to show up at Christmas parties and to, um, we used to have to take clients out and we used to have to do a whole heap of stuff, you know, go and visit the clients that you haven't seen for ages and present them with a card and a bottle of wine or a hamper or whatever and, and it was it was mad busy in December that was on top of doing all of the things for yourself 
Natalie, lovely to see you. Thank you for joining us. So to avoid that misbalance, that out of alignment, that, that kind of overwhelming feeling, what I've done in, in preparing for this chat today is broken it down into four steps. Now these four are all going to be different for all of us because we all experience this this overwhelm and this this out of alignment, out of balance in, in our own way. And of course it can come and go. So I've been very, very conscious that it, it's here and now, but of course this can hit at any point in time, can't it? This can this can affect us when we least expect it. This can affect us because we've got a whole heap of stuff going on in our personal lives. Because of course balance and, and living as one is 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 the same for all of us. You can't have everything in line in your professional life but actually your home life's not quite as it should be without still feeling that because we can't just switch and we had um we had this conversation with Bushra when she came on and talked about the way that actually her work had, had very much created some stress for her in, in her previous roles and and you can't not you can't not take that home can you and, and likewise if you've got something going on at home it ends up coming into work so so the way I've tackled this now is to very much look at breaking it down into a way that we can all start to use some practical steps to get this under control a little bit more. By the way, I've got tea. Still very colour coordinated. This is a new this is a new mug. Um, and yeah, yesterday I realised that literally you couldn't tell the difference between my mug and my top. So I've gone a little bit more pink today. Dawn, good morning. Good morning. I know it's a super, is it super good morning to you? Is it really early? I think it is, Dawn. Lovely to have you here. Okay, so step one. Oh, look at the steam. That's how cold. Can you see the steam? It's, it's not warm. It's not warm in here right now. So step one is first, and this is this is key. This is key throughout all of this. Define what balance looks like for you. So, what do I mean that, by that? So we talk and we see a lot around at the moment about self care, self love, self care, and I don't necessarily immediately associate with those labels because to me what self-care self-love means 5 30 dawn that is early i'm honored <laughs> that you are with us so early for me self-care self-love um almost sort of creates this picture of lying in a bath for, with all candles and you know having a face mask and and just having like a pamper and that's never been me i've never been able to just do not a lot but actually self-care I've learned for me means exercise it means doing and and finding a way of actually just switching off from other stuff am I I'm not breaking up am I every now and again I go a bit Ooh, please tell me if I go weird um so for me actually the balance that I crave in my life is being able to make decisions for myself and once I defined that, I found it a lot more easy, a lot more um, natural to be able to, to create that balance in my day and in my life. But if we're all sat here right now going, well, yeah, I sort of get the principle, but I don't actually know what balance looks like for me, then we're all going to struggle moving on with, with, with how to actually bring it into our lives. So do you know, tell me, um, on, on lap now or on the replay, tell me if you know what balance means for you. What do you need? What elements do you need? And do you know where to get them from? Because it, do you know what? It's okay if you don't. And I think there's there's almost a, a slight pressure. It's that whole sort of sitting around a room and everyone talking about this subject and or, or they're, they're talking, we used to get this at work a lot. Um, you'd have an acronym and everyone was talking merrily about this acronym and everyone's going, yeah, 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 it's this. And I'd be sat thinking, I don't know what that acronym is. Eventually I would ask, but it's that kind of thing. Well, actually, what does that mean to you? And if you don't know, let's, you know, let's get some ideas from one another and share because having that balance of X, Y, Z, A, B, C, having all of those things in your life, you need to know what they all are first so if, for example, if, like me, lying in a bath full of petals with candles and a face mask on doesn't necessarily do it for you, don't put it on your, this is what I need in my life. If spending time with friends and, you know, having a Zoom call once a week with a quiz, if that means 
that kind of charges you, if that's one of your things, then, you know, be conscious of that. Know what that thing is. If it's exercise, if it's Emma music for you, I'm sure that has to play a big part in your day. If it's just being in your own company, maybe just being peaceful, it might be yoga, it might be meditation, it might just be closing the door on the world and just sitting with a book. It might be going out for a walk in nature. It might actually be working on a really intense project for a really intense period of time. You know, th there's no good or bad. There's no right or wrong in this. It's really what I'm saying is your first step has to be define what those elements within your balance needs to be. Uh, Dawn, what are you saying? Uh, my sense of balance is when I can have some alone time and get into my Bible. Perfect. So you know that and that is brilliant. So knowing what those things are, that's your first step. Step one, identify and I literally spend a little bit of time having a chat with yourself. Okay, so hmm, I've never actually thought about that. So for me, I know it's got to have exercise. Like my ideal, on my ideal day has got to have some exercise in it. It's got to have, good morning, Monica. It's got to have some time when I'm literally just on my own, just peaceful, not going to be disturbed. And that, that might only be half an hour. It's got to have some outside time. I've got to be outside of the fresh air at some point, regardless of the weather. I've got to get some work done and I've got to feel as though I've achieved something. We're going to come on to that. And it's also got to have some social time. So be that with my friends, with family, online, offline, whatever it is. So I know my kind of headline elements. That's my first step. So I want that to be your first step. So if you're not even at that stage yet, then take, you know, take nothing else from today other than going away and going, okay, yeah, that's true. I probably need to, to assess. Because if you don't know, isn't it easy to let the other things in life pull us in all these different directions and suddenly you're not even aware that you're in that out of alignment, out of balance, you're getting overwhelmed and you don't know what to do about it. You're going to have to know and establish for yourself what is your go-to place, where can I go, how can I go back to this thing that resets me and allows me to then to then realign. So your second step, 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 your second step is having two separate elements. Your one is a conscious thought about where you want to be at the end of the week and the second one is where you want to be at the end of the day. So this doesn't have to be like a really funky formal, some people are by the way, and that works for them, like a, a, a big sheet that says, okay, so by the end of the week, I need to have done this, this and this. If that's what works for you, then brilliant. If it doesn't, and that feels a bit forced, then you know, even just setting yourself some intentions on maybe a Sunday evening, Sunday night, and saying to yourself, okay, so this time next week when I'm reflecting on my week, what do I need to have included? What what do I want to have got done? And again, I'm not, you'll be, you know, let's be very, very clear. I'm not focusing this just on your work. I'm not focusing this on your business growth. I'm focusing this on your life because growing your business, I'm going to slightly go off track here, but it's really important. Growing your business is about growing yourself just as much. And it's about allowing you to totally, more than importantly, Step into every element that you need in your life. I really hope I'm not breaking up. I think it's when a comment comes in, I just go a little bit. Mm. When you can step into all parts of your life fully, like fully showing up in all of your roles, being a mum, being a coach, being a teacher, being a partner, being a friend, being a daughter, being an auntie, when you can fully step into all of those and you feel like you've got that balance, that's when you're showing up at your best. If you are totally focused on the growth of your business and you are you're sidelining sidelining all those other elements of your life before too much longer you're going to feel that 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 out of alignment that misbalance so this this that i'm focusing on in these steps is about all those elements it's about having that consciousness of i need this in my life i need this in my life and of course your business is going to be like a major big element of that but it doesn't have to be all and it shouldn't be all because, you know, it's that whole um, all work and no play. I nearly couldn't think of that. All work and no play. You can't, you can't live like that for very long at all. You'll burn, you'll burn out. So have that at the end of the week, conscious moment. Where do I want to be? Like, how do I want to be feeling? Add some emotion to it because as soon as you start adding some emotion, you're much more tethered into achieving that. So you might sit and you might say, 
Okay, so by the end of the week, I want to have had three conversations with people that potentially could be clients for me. I want to have connected with two more people. I want to have three more people into my group. Whatever your vague kind of thoughts, connotations are, you might want to write them down. Pauline, I know you're a massive fan of keeping your goals and being very formal about it. But for those of us that don't necessarily want to nail them down, it's those intentions. It's those, where do I want to be? But add some elements that are personal to you. So actually, I would like to have been and had a, now we're allowed, I want to go and have a coffee with a friend because I've not seen her for a while. I want to have gone for two runs between now and next week. I want to have done two lots of workout, whatever it is for you. Have those, those thoughts in your mind so that when you get to that point of next week, you can go, so where am I? Where am I against those? Now, the way that we get to those and we make sure we get to them is, is on a morning saying, okay, where do I want to get to by the end of today? Now, it depends. Are you a morning person? Are you an evening person? It, 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 you know, you can, you can prioritise in your way, but I'm an evening person, much more night time. So I will set my intentions in the evening before I go to bed as to what I want to get done within the next 24 hours. So they might be the big stuff. They might be your absolutely needs and there's there's a real distinction let's be clear there's a need and there's a want task isn't there so there's stuff that like comes up and you go I really want to do that because it's fun and I like it and it it it, it makes me feel good you need to have some of those on there as well but you've got to get your needs done first you've got to get your essentials like I can't I can't not get up on a morning because I don't feel you know I've worked until late because I've got to take my kids to school. So, you know, you've got to have your needs in there. So each day, you almost have that conscious thought of, these are my needs, these are what I have to get done, and these are the ones. So you get to your ones second. Uh, Sasha, what are you saying? Balance for you means not being pulled emotionally into other people's drama. Nice, yes, I didn't consider that. And being conscious of my, of any shifts that are not serving me. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that's much more um, internal and, and within yourself. You are good. Oh, you're so kind, Dawn. Especially morning. Oh, Deborah, good morning. How are you feeling? I hope you're okay. Paula, hi. Sorry, I didn't see you pop on. Good morning to you. Um, please remind you what the topic is today. It's balance, my lovely. Balance and avoiding the overwhelm. So bringing elements of balance into all parts of our life. So it's we started off this week talking about work, home, life balance. But actually, the topic for today is much more around all areas of your life to avoid the overwhelm and approaching it. Oh, as obviously you already, you've probably already. Ah, thank you. Okay, let's see. I should just leave you all to it. I? <laughs> okay, so that was your step two. Let's go back. Step one: define what balance looks like for you. Oh, you know, you're just not kidding. You shouldn't even be here, then, my lovely Deborah. Please look after yourself. So your step one is defining what that balance looks like for you. What does it include? What are those things that you absolutely need to have within your day, within your life, within your week? Though that's your step one, because that's personal to you and I can't tell you what they are. Step, not step one. Step two is have a conscious thought about by the end of the week, by the end of the day, I'm going to have X, Y, Z. I'm going to work towards. Like, don't make it a thing that is so big. You, you kind of, you've had it on your list forever. It's just those... Let's keep ourselves rolling forwards. Let's actually keep moving, keep the motion. Um, we put a quote into the, the group this week around um, actually balance is, is much more um, simple. It, I, I'll never be able to remember it. I don't remember them. But it was Albert Einstein's quote that balance is easier when you're moving. And, and that's, that's the piece around the overwhelm, isn't it? It's about making sure that you're always moving in a forward direction to allow yourself to bring that balance in and then to correct if you don't. If you're if you stop dead, if you stop still, and we all know what that you know what happens on a bike when you do that, you start to tip. But you know if you're moving yourself forward, you're not going to get that overwhelming sense. But you need to be moving yourself forward in a way that you know you've got those elements of balance in your life. So I digress. Okay, let's go back. Step three then. Step three is about being realistic, and this comes back to in a way it's those needs and wants. Being realistic and also asking for help. I'm pretty sure we did help last week. I can never remember. It was, it was either help last week or the week before. Um, when, we, when we have these thoughts around, this is where I want to get to at the end of the week, it's very tempting to go on this and this and I'll have this on and I want to do this and I want to get this done. 
and suddenly we've got this list which is, is in itself overwhelming who does that I do that sometimes and then I go oh yeah actually I don't have a million hours in the day but actually at this time of the year particularly it's that it's that importance of saying to yourself well these are my needs these are my wants but actually these are the things that I can probably start to get some help with so you know if you've got if you've got lots of presents to buy for, then can you share the load of that with another family member? Can you get some help with doing some of the things in your home? Can you uh, delegate something within your business just for this month, if that helps you, just to free yourself up? Don't be afraid, as we, as we covered in massive detail, to ask for that help when you need it. Because again, if you don't, you are, you are heading down a road of allowing yourself to get overwhelmed. And then nothing gets done right, does it? You'll end up in that position where you almost get physically flawed, as in, you know, knocked to the floor because you've just tried and tried and tried to take it all on, take it all on. And then all of a sudden your body and your mind goes, no, that's it. You've had enough. And from a very personal experience, I, I can tell you this time last year, I was in that place. I had had a lot, lot going on. Um, that all sort of culminated in the end with a, with a funeral which was really emotional and having got through that um I was literally I got the worst virus I think I've had possibly ever and was flawed for like three weeks so allowing yourself that help to come into your life is crucial and and asking for it before that point of yeah I'm, I'm, I'm at that kind of tipping point of failure now Yes, going back, absolutely going back to your priorities and re being realistic about your needs. I don't think I said this when we talked about need, but everybody has a different element of need on, on the list. So some will say, well, that doesn't need to get done. It's like a nice to have. But to somebody else, it's like a massive priority for them and it, it will stress them if it doesn't get done. So then, then your, it is about your need. What is your need? What has to be done in a day? Um so be, you know, again, be honest with yourself that if something, if there's something re a real priority for you and it makes your life easier, less stressful, you don't get concerned about stuff, then have that on your need list. Okay, and then the final step in terms of your balance is celebrating, taking the time and going, yeah, I've got to the end of my week. These were the intentions that I'd set. This was the plan I'd got. I've stayed on track and actually look where I am, like, I'm not a big believer in constantly looking behind yourself. Absolutely not. You should be looking forward and you certainly you should be, if you do look back, it's about looking back with that positivity and looking back and going, yes, actually, that was really good. That was a good week. This was enjoyable. I've loved doing that. Okay, so I didn't manage to get to that, that and that. But it's okay because I did this, this and this and this is how I feel about it now. And allowing yourself to celebrate the little stuff just as much because that shows that you are recognising that you're in a positive place. And again, we've talked about this before around being, being as your resting position, being in a positive, not being happy skippy down the road every day, but actually being conscious that actually it's okay where I am. And yeah, it's a, it's a little bit annoying. I didn't get that done and that done, but look tomorrow's another day I can go at it and tackle it again and having that celebration that I you you almost label it as that so whatever it is your thing so for me at the moment in December anyone that missed the start we were talking about my Christmas tradition of a Bailey's coffee um, which is hugely indulgent and absolutely gorgeous but not particularly healthy but for me it could be like right I've got this this and this done so at the weekend, absolutely, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to watch a Christmas film and I'm going to celebrate my week's progress with my baby's coffee and label it as that. You know, tell somebody, tell someone in your life, tell someone in your house, I'm having a celebration right now because I've this or I'm going to go and take myself off and give myself a pedicure and that is my celebration. I'm going to go and open a bottle of my favourite wine that I was keeping for best because it's my celebration. Allow yourself to do that because... That all forms part of your balance. It's, it's about you saying, I'm okay, like I've done all right this week. What do you, pause moment, what do you use as your celebration? Because I love to hear what people's little traditions are. You know, this doesn't have to be like a major, major, you know, I've just, I've just agreed a thousand pound contract and I'm gonna this and this and blow the doors off. But what are your little things that you allow yourself 
which you you recognize as being your celebrations and if you don't have any think of one now think of what you can you can add into your oh yes actually this is my celebration this is how i'm rewarding myself um i try and try and make time every two weeks to do my fingernails um and there's times when I only do half, so I take the old one off and then I don't repaint them. So then it's almost like, actually, I can award myself a celebration moment and sit and paint my fingernails. Um, uh, Zosh is saying, set a goal, hit a goal, reward yourself. Yes, totally. Um, so let's recap again. So we've talked about the need for balance to avoid your overwhelm. So your first step is knowing what balance looks like for you. Nobody else can tell you what it is. Nobody can say well you need to have this element in your life um, if I were to do a routine or you've got, if you're not doing that you're not then, then it just wouldn't work for me absolutely wouldn't work for me <laughs> thank you for all the love Monica um so for me it's around that exercise element time on my own some good work so feeling like I've progressed my work um had some family time had some social time had some fresh air they're mine and I know them because I've thought about it so if you don't, sit today and think about what they are. Then plan, have a, uh, I don't want to call them goals because they sound like really formal and I know I talk about goals a lot and the way that we should set them, but it's more like an intention, it's more like a plan. Where, where do I want to be? How do I want to feel at the end of this week? And then break that down into, okay, so how and where am I going to get myself to by the end of today? Because if you've got something that's the end of your week, it can feel a bit, oh, I, I'm not going to be able to have put my Christmas decorations up, finished the online shopping, ordered the turkey, uh, connected with three more people. And, you know, you, suddenly it can feel overwhelming. So breaking them down into um, daily tasks is much, much more manageable. So break those down. Making sure that you always do your needs first. Like you can't ignore them as much as sometimes we want to. You've got to get your needs done first and then your more fun, your wants, your likes, the enjoyable elements. Step three was being realistic, like don't take so much on, it feels immediately overwhelming as soon as you, you're conscious of it. Get some help wherever you need to and ask for it before you get to that breaking point because it's too late by then. You're not thinking straight, you're not in that place of, of really being able to unemotionally prioritise. If you take too much on, then you're not, you're not, you haven't got the clarity of thought to actually decide what you should be doing, how you should be prioritising. Step four, celebrate. I can see some coming up. We'll, we'll see those in a minute. So that's really allowing yourself that conscious, I am celebrating this thing. So I am here now and this is where I, where I can celebrate. It's where I need to be. I'm here because this is the right place for me right now. So just because I didn't this, this and this doesn't mean you can't award yourself that celebration. Uh, glass of wine. Yes. I wish a glass of wine was considered a celebration in my house. Celebration of eating my dinner, maybe, but um, not quite a full-on celebration. But yes, that is a good one. And again, saying cheers to yourself, congratulations to me, is sometimes as much as it takes. So that is your fourth step. I'll pop them in the top of the comments when I finished. Um, but I think, you know, around this time of the year, it is, as we've said, really easy to feel that you're pulled from pillar to post. There's obligations to to do this, to do the other, this year feels a little bit different and I must admit it doesn't feel quite so pressured this year but there is still a requirement and there's still an expectation we put on ourselves. So if that, if this helps today by just having those thoughts around I need to make sure that I've got this included, I've got this included, then my job is done and hopefully you can go and have a more balanced week, a more balanced December so that you're more you're more focused on the tasks that you do and you are just concentrating on those one task at a time and doing them properly, doing them well. Fabulous. Right, before you all go, I need to tell you, because I've done very little um, telling everybody about this, I need to tell you about the Business Accelerator live workshop because we are now just less than two weeks away from doing it. There's already a heap of people registered that is, is just going to create the most fabulous environment for us to do. So what is it? The Business Accelerator course is an online course standalone. It has been there for ages. There's lots of feedback in the group about those that have already done it and love it. But what I'm conscious of is that when you do a course on your own, you only go to a certain level if you do it at all. But I didn't say 
You only go to a certain depth of knowledge with it. You can only develop your own ideas to a certain point. So what I'm doing is taking that and we're going to do it together. So we're going to go through it, through each of the modules. We're going to do three per day. So this is over two days on the 15th and 16th of December. We start at 12.30 each day and we'll be around about a couple of hours. And I know we've got, we've got some um, school run obligations where people will need to dive off. So I will try and keep it to those two hours. But we are going to explore three of the topics that's in this training area. So you get that training vault and you get all the video training, the workshops, templates, the, the additional content that support all that video training. You get that straight away as soon as you register. But then on the 15th and 16th, we're going to come together as a group and we're going to talk about what those tasks, what those, those activities mean for us in our own businesses. So that rather than just sitting and working on it on your own, you can get under the skin of this subject. Emma, yes, of course, you're registered. Um, so we can actually really transform those into genuine actions for you to move your business forward. And the reason I did this in December, like there's two schools of thought, isn't there? December is not a non-month. It is still a normal month. And if it sets us up ready to go again after we've had a little break for Christmas to start 2021 strong, then this is the perfect time. So let me tell you about the topics because... It, I've, I've included a variety for us to, to both look at sort of practical strategies for the business, but also look at some mindset stuff as well, which will always come through the thread of everything I do. So the topics um, are goals and planning. Goals and planning, crucial. Like no business ever gets anywhere without a certain element of planning. Now, for some people, that's a ball egg, frankly, and they don't enjoy it. Others love staying at that stage and they get so into their plans and their goal setting, they don't actually start doing the work. So it's about getting that balance between the two, making sure that you've got goals that are going to work for you and that you've got your plans in place that are actually meaningful and you can prioritise how you spend your time. So you're not you're not in that faffing stage for long. So we're going to really work on that. So you have some specific goals by the end of this workshop that are yours, that you can put up on your fridge, you can put on your notice board, you can stick on the side of your monitor. You know what you're working towards and you know that they're stretching but achievable and they motivate you they get you a little bit excited because you're like oh I really want to get going on this thing we're going to look at your ideal client because honestly no business is going to be able to take itself out into the world without knowing who they're serving you can try but you won't connect with anybody you won't make that true deep be able to serve that person connection so we are going to really dig into your ideal client and we're going to uncover some stuff that says yeah, but I could serve anybody. And we're going to really start to understand why we need an ideal client and, and how that serves us going forward. So then what follows naturally from that is a client attraction process. So how do we use what we've now learned and defined about who we want to serve and how do we go out and find those people in a way that still feels aligned for us? And by the way, I'm never one to advocate things that you have to uh, spend a fortune on. This is about you using your time, your skills, sharing your message with the world. So we do client attraction, then we do sales because at the end of all of that process, what you should be leading up to is being able to draw somebody towards you and having that conversation with them around whether they work for you, work with you, want to buy from you. And it's at that point that a lot of us can end up going, oh, it feels icky, I don't like it. So actually we're going to get to grips with some methodologies that allow us to feel a lot more relaxed about selling, not feel like you're heading into that, oh, I'm forcing somebody to buy and they don't want to. That actually you'll be able to see that by showing up to, to serve that person and to help them is a natural, natural way of serving and a natural way of selling. So we're going to work on that. So each day is going to be similarly structured. We are going to summarise what you'll have already seen in the course content then we're going to dive into the exercises and, and you know, it will be a collaborative thing. So, you know, the group of ladies that are registered already have got a variety of experiences, a, a huge variety of businesses and they're at different stages of their business journeys as well. So it's about collectively, collaboratively learning from one another. I will be obviously leading, chairing. It's um, it's in Zoom. So we're, we're in a, a kind of environment where we can all speak to one another literally see each other's faces it's not like this you won't be just typing you will be there as a live real person it's like a sort of um you know a literal virtual meeting so if you if that sounds like something you feel like you should be involved in if you know that you've got some areas of your business that just don't feel like they fit at the moment this is your perfect springboard and on the other side of this you'll have your goals you'll have your plans 
you'll know who you're looking to find and connect with, you'll know how to draw them towards you, and then you'll know how to sell to them as well. You have got the foundations of a really strong business to start you off so, so strong next year. To register for this, so this is a paid event because clearly there's a, there's a, a big commitment for my time and I want you to be fully, fully committed. So this um, is £99, but you get that course immediately and you get to keep that course forever. So you can dive in and out, you can use the templates, you can use the, um, the worksheets forever, uh, using all the video content forevermore. So you get that straight away and then we get, we get together on the 15th and 16th at 12.30. So if you are interested in doing that, just drop a comment in here. Yes, please, more info. Drop me a direct, direct message. Um, we'll, we'll have a chat. I'll be able to send you the invoice and get you set up. So um, it's something that I'm, uh, it's the first one I'm doing, but I have actually included this in my strategy for next year because already it feels as though this has, has hit the spot with people. Like the interest has been amazing already. And we have to say, I haven't particularly started promoting it yet. So get make sure you get in there because I do want to, to limit the numbers to make sure that everybody can get that depth of understanding. So don't wait too long. I don't want loads of, oh, last minute, can I, can I, can I? Um, drop me a note, drop me a yes, please. And um, we'll talk about getting you registered for that. It's going to be a lovely, lovely day. I think we might even have like some Christmas hats. It's getting really close by that point, isn't it? Um, okay, thank you all for being with me. It has been fabulous as ever. Um, stay close to the group, um, look after yourselves and I will see you next week. All right, see you later, bye.